Hey, what's up you guys? It's your girl Judy here with My Life as Geek I'm. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing products from Bonnie's Choice. A company called Born Pretty reached out to me via email a few weeks ago and they offered to send me some items that I could try out and review on my channel. So I was like, hey, free stuff, why not? So I contacted them through email, they got back to me and a few weeks later, I received these items that I chose off their website. They gave me a little list of things I could choose from and these are the things that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Just let me know this video is not sponsored. There are no affiliate links. I do have a coupon code from them that I will leave in the description box down below that you guys can use to save 10% off. I do not get any commission from this code, so feel free to click away and save some money where you can because I'm all about that life. If you want to hear more about Bonnie's Choice products and see these items that I got in action, then just keep on watching. So when the rep from Born Pretty store reached out to me, it was about three weeks ago. And when I ordered my items, she said that it'd take about 46 weeks to get to me. So she said, just be patient. At least they told me how long it was going to take. But I received my items yesterday, which only really took three weeks for the items to get here to me. And so I thought that was pretty cool. When I went to check out their website, The Born Pretty Store, it looked like an American website with Chinese products on there. So if you have seen those little ads floating around with these gimmicky items and this and that and the other, that's what I thought that I would be getting. And so I actually didn't have super high expectations of these products. I thought, oh, you know, free stuff. I got nothing to lose. I'll try them out, see how we go. So I ordered these things off the website and I said, hey, let's see what happens. I got these in a little package. It was sent from China. And I mean, that's okay. What isn't made in China these days? So when I opened up the package, the first impression that I got from these items was the packaging. Now I'm a sucker for nice packaging. Like I'll buy something because of the packaging. I don't know what it is about nice packaging, but it just gets me every time. It's actually a little bit embarrassing, but I have a full bag of nice palette boxes that I've collected over the last few years and I'm planning to make it into a whole wall collage on a canvas. Anyway, it's a whole story. I'll see if I get around to doing that, but I thought it would make a nice background. Anyway, this video is not about that. I'm talking about the packaging. So I'll show you what I got. I got the Bonnie's Choice loose powder. Well, these are all Bonnie's Choice. I got the loose face powder. I got magnetic lashes. I got their matte liquid lipstick in Screen Siren number no. 7. I also got their face concealer. And last but not least, their precision eyeliner. And when I looked at these yesterday, of course I tried it out on my hands and swatched the eyeliner. And the lipstick swatch is still there, and so is the eyeliner swatch. And I've taken a shower and washed my hands multiple times since doing these swatches. So I've got expectations for these, well, these two items anyway. So without further ado, let's get into the makeup application. I've already got my foundation on. Next, I'm going to do concealer so that I can use the loose face powder. I'm going to go in with a Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. And now that that's blended in, I'm going to go in with the Bonnie's Choice Loose Face Powder. I got the loose powder in number two. I don't think there were very many shades. From what I can remember, there were the three shades light, medium, and dark, I think. I will leave all the links of these products in the description box down below. You can go check it out and use the code to save 10% if you so fancy buying any of these items. It comes in this little container here. It has the usual little puff there, which I don't think I will use. And this powder looks a little bit yellow. I'm not a huge fan of these powder sort of containers or loose powders really, so I don't know why I got this one. Just because it fluffs everywhere. But I'm going to go in with a brush and set my concealer and see if this yellowish powder sort of changes the color of my under eye. Okay, so from what I can see while I'm applying it, it is an extremely finely milled powder. And it's actually setting my concealer really, really nicely. It leaves a very smooth airbrushed matte look. I believe part of that is to do with the concealer because the concealer is a good one. So the products that I'm, I'm using are ones that I know work well for me so that if anything goes wrong, I know what it is that I did differently. I'm just gonna take some of that powder everywhere else just to get rid of some of the shine and to set my makeup for the rest of the day. 
So I like that powder. It doesn't really smell like anything. These items actually look really super effing professional. Not like they came from a hacky sort of website, but like items that you would expect from a reputable site like Makeup Revolution, Makeup Geek, Morphe. So impressed with the first one. We'll see if by the end of the video that powder would have creased or broken apart or anything like that. I just remembered that I actually got a concealer from Bonnie's Choice as well. So I used... <sighs> right, so for the sake of this video, I'm going to take off my concealer again, reapply with the Bonnie's Choice concealer, which I also got off the website. Damn it, I suck. At least we know the powder worked. So if I'd used both the Bonnie's Choice concealer and powder and it didn't turn out nice, then we wouldn't know if it was one or the other. Ah, there is a plus side to my... I meant that. I totally meant that. That wasn't a mistake at all. I'm going to go in again with my foundation. And it was looking so nice too. Now, I'm going to go in with the Bunny's Choice Concealer. This one actually has a really nice feel to it. I swatched it on my hand yesterday and it sort of dried out almost matte. So we'll see how I go with this one. The test is really applying it under the eyes to see whether or not it creases or applies seamlessly and blends out nicely. So I'm just gonna apply that under the eyes. I'm gonna say one thing though, their shade range sucks, but that's probably what you would expect from a really small company like they seem to be. So this concealer is probably a little bit yellow for me, but this would have been the closest one to my skin tone. Blending that out. I already don't like it. This concealer I don't feel like is doing a whole lot for brightening my under eyes. I don't think that has anything to do with the shade. I just feel like the formula is just getting soaked up into my makeup sponge. I feel like it's not really concealing my dark circles, so I'm going to apply a little bit more under there and see if that does anything. Okay, that helped a little bit. I guess if you want this concealer to really do things for your under eyes, you're going to want to build it up. But at the same time, who wants to build up layers of concealer to your face when you could very well just use another concealer that you only have to put one layer on and it does the job. So now I'm going to go in again <laughs> with the powder. That concealer didn't smell like anything by the way if you were wondering. So I'm going to go in again with the powder. These products have the same shade undertone like a little bit of a yellow undertone which I guess is nice for some people. I'm feeling like that powder worked really nicely again with the concealer but any brightness that that concealer put under my eyes the powder just sort of cancelled it out okay so all that concealer and powder did was put extra layers of makeup under my eyes hopefully throughout the day it doesn't get creasy or cakey but I feel like it's accentuating the super fine lines under my eyes so not a huge fan of that concealer it's not as brightening or as high coverage as I would like it to be but powder Thumbs up. I like it. I'm just looking at the stuff that I got to make sure I didn't miss any steps like I did before. Now I feel like I need a little bit of warmth and structure to my face. So I'm going to quickly apply a little bit of warmth in my crease and some bronzer and I will be right back and finish off with the lipstick, the eyeliner and the magnetic lashes. Just keeping the eye look really super simple today because the eyeliner that I'm going to use I wanted to stand out and I want to see exactly how it performs so all I've done is taken these two shades in the Morphe second nature palette and applied that into my crease now I'm going to go into the product that I'm probably the most excited about I'm going to go in with the precision eyeliner this is the one that I've swatched on my hand yesterday and it's still on there it's not coming off so hopefully I'll be able to remove this at the end of the day off my eyes but if not I'll just have a super smoky look for work tomorrow that's not advisable try and get off any makeup on your face at the end of the day don't go to sleep with makeup on tip for the day 
So I'm really excited about this eyeliner because check out the tip of this one. See how fine that is? Excuse my manky hands. These are the hands of a makeup artist, guys, always covered in makeup. So I'm going to go in with the precision eyeliner. I'm going to zoom you guys a little bit closer so you can see exactly how it applies. I will do my best to stay in frame. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, I feel like the formula of this is a little bit watery. I don't know if you can see it, but when I run it along my eyes, it sort of tends to seep up a little bit into the fine lines that I have on my eyelid. But if it weren't for that, and if I probably just really took my time with it, I could do a really nice winged liner with this. So this is one of those instances when I tried to start out with a really thin eyeliner and it came out a little bit thicker than expected, but that's okay. I just hope I can match it on the other side. And it better be good because judging from my swatch yesterday, this is gonna stay all day. I like the fine tip of this because you can really make that super sharp wing and absolutely get to the corners of your eyes and apply it really close to the lash line. Now that that's taken me a bajillion years, I think that's as good or as close as they're gonna get. So right off the bat, I think I really like this eyeliner. It's not the usual tip that I would go for. I tend to go more for the eyeliner marker like the Sharpie style heads, but that was actually relatively easy to use. And as long as this isn't one of those eyeliners that dry up after three uses, I think I actually might buy another one of these because this one on the website was only like $4 or something like that. And use my code to save 10% off. So that eyeliner was a hit. All right, so now I'm going to go into the matte liquid lipstick. If you have watched any of my videos at all whatsoever, you would know by now that my favorite lip color is red. So that's why I chose a red one because I know that even if I didn't like the formula a lot, I would probably still end up using it because it's red. So I would normally go in with a lip liner, but I'm not gonna do that today because I wanna see exactly how this lipstick performs on its own. This one is their matte lipstick in Screen Siren number 7. The applicator of this is your usual doe foot applicator. The packaging has that really clean, sleek, almost luxurious type of feel. I find this type of applicator really easy to use for my lip shape. Okay, so straight away I feel like this lipstick would apply better with a lip liner. It's a little bit watery in the way when I apply it to my lip line, it could very easily have the tendency to bleed into those skin lines out further than my lips, if that makes any sense. So next time I will use this, I will definitely do a lip liner first and then go over the top with the lipstick. I didn't go over it twice, this is probably one one pump for the bottom and then one dip again for the top. It's drying down quite matte, and it's actually a really comfortable formula. The test is when you smile, because when a lipstick dries down matte, sometimes it goes a little bit hard, and then when you smile, the lipstick will break up in your lip lines, where when you smile, your lips stretch, if that makes any sense. So this one's now completely dry. That seems to have quite a flexible formula. It moves with my lips, it doesn't crack apart. The only thing with this is you get the usual butthole lips line, which isn't a huge issue for me. I feel like for some people that could be a deal breaker, but if you're wearing a dark lipstick or a red one like I do all the time, it's just one of those things that you kind of deal with and it doesn't show up a lot unless I'm talking like unless I'm talking like this, which I don't do, obviously. So I'm definitely gonna use this Bonnie's Choice lipstick again. So we'll see how that wears throughout the day. We'll see when I press my lips together, the bottom will transfer to the top or vice versa. But at the moment, the sticky sort of just feels like a normal sticky would feel. Okay, so just from that moment where I've been talking, I don't always pull my lips apart like that, but I can already see it breaking up 
a tiny little bit here and there. I feel like I could do another layer, but I'm not gonna do that because I feel like then it would start to crack and ball up. Okay, I'll put another layer. We'll see what happens. Okay, so that's the second layer of that red lipstick. I'm actually really liking this. I actually didn't think that I would like anything more than my Ofra Cosmetics Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in Atlantic City. It's actually almost the same color. The formula is absolutely not the same. This is more watery than this one. The Ofra one is a little bit more moussey, if you know what I mean, and I find it easier for me to move that product around on my lips and get it to shape my lips. But I actually really like this, guys. This is the bomb. I think this was only $7. Ooh, Ofra, you in trouble, girl. I just wish that they had more shades than this. I think there was about four or five on their website. And now, last but absolutely not least, I have got the Magnetic Lashes. I thought these would be cool to get and to try out because if I wanted to ever wear lashes in any of my videos and not want to go through all the trouble of putting glue on my lashes and putting them on and then just like, ugh, headache. I'm not, I already wear contacts and that's uncomfortable enough for me. So I thought maybe if these were any good, I could use these for videos where I just wanted to have a little bit of extra, extra something on my face, you know? Before I put these lashes on, I'm going to go in with a quick coat of the L'Oreal Paradise. This mascara is so good, guys. Hashtag Tati made me buy it. I'm gonna wait for that mascara to dry and while I'm doing that, I'm going to check out these lashes. This is what they look like. Apparently, that's one pair and that's another pair. There's just one set in here. One will go over the top line and the other one will magnetic at the bottom, sort of so, sort of sandwiching your natural lashes together. I feel like these are gonna be really uncomfortable, but we'll see how I go. While I'm waiting for my mascara to dry, I'm gonna quickly go in with some highlighter because I feel like I need some. I'm really loving this highlighter. This one is the Maybelline Master Chrome in Molten Gold. Okay, so now that my mascara is dry, I'm going to attempt, keyword being attempt, to apply these magnetic lashes. They come in a little container like this. The bottom is magnetized, so they just, oops, fail. So they just sort of like stick on there. All right, so this is kind of how they work. Just magnetize them together, I guess. Okay, I'm already annoyed and haven't even tried these on my eyes yet. So I'm just gonna place it there, like you would a normal lash. No. Can you see what I'm doing? Because I can't. I'm trying to sandwich my natural lashes between these two. I'm so bad at normal lashes at the best of times. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Have I got the wrong idea here? Or... Oh. No. <laughs> Let's try again. Put that one up the top. And... Try and align. These at the bottom. Easy, right? No. I'm actually really trying so hard here, you guys. See if I can use a pair of tweezers or something. Just line that up where it needs. No, it's stuck to the tweezers. No tweezers. See that? I've been trying so long, my camera stopped. Almost got it. Didn't get that corner quite right, though. Right, so from far away. It actually looks quite decent, but if you come close up, you can see where the magnet start and my eyelid starts, and it's actually a little bit uncomfortable in the corner. But I'm gonna try and make this work because it actually looks quite decent when I've got it on there. I've just gotta try and get it in the right spot. That's what he said. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not how it works. There's a strip and then there's three magnets on the outer, middle, and inner corner of the lashes. And the only part that's grabbing is the middle bit and then the outer ones are sort of like <laughs> I'm gonna try one more time. 
because I'm really losing my shit here. So I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. They are in nowhere near the real estate that they need to be. And if I blink hard enough, I feel like they're gonna fall off. Another downside to these magnetic lashes might be that because the magnets are attached to the outer, middle, and inner corners, if you needed to trim this at all to fit your eye shape, you're not going to be able to because if you trim it at either end, you're going to lose one of the magnets. We'll see if I can get this uh, other side on. I feel like by the time I put these on, I would have rubbed off most of my eye makeup. Okay, so <laughs> I've sort of got them on. From far away, they look all right. They actually look uh, like I have lashes on from far away, but they are a little bit uncomfortable. I can see them. I can feel that they're on there. They are what? to put on. They look all right from far away, but if you come close up, you can see that they are not even aligned to my eye shape. Overall, uh, I don't think that I will be using these lashes again. They're just too hard to put on. I'm already pretty slow with applying normal false lashes. But these ones took me 10 times longer to try and get even on there and they're not even on where they need to be sitting. So I think I might just uh, not use these ones again. They actually look really pretty though, which is a shame. I wish they were just easier to, to apply, if you know what I mean. Okay, so overall, I actually really enjoyed trying out these products. The lashes, obviously a no-go. The concealer was okay. It didn't give me as much coverage under the eyes as I would have liked, but I think this will be good for spot concealing or just using on the days when you want a little bit of something on your face, but just not too much. So the formula is not terrible, but it's not something that I would reach for every day, if you know what I mean. Also, they need to expand their shade range, just the lipstick I love will definitely be using again. By now, it's still a little bit sticky and it's only coming off a very tiny little bit. So I'm actually really impressed with this lipstick. I will definitely be using again and I might even try some other shades. The powder, A+. I like how it set my under eye. By this point in the video, it only has the creasing that was happening when I first applied the concealer. But where I applied the powder on my forehead and around my nose, it's still as smooth as it was when I first applied it. So really impressed with the powder. What else did we get? Powder, concealer, lipstick. Oh, oh, and the eyeliner. Guys, this is a good eyeliner. The packaging is sleek. The application tip is spot on. It's very fine. Hopefully it's not one of those ones that dry up after I've used it three times. But really into that one. I'm really super impressed with how some of these turned out because honestly I didn't have super high expectations. But I will definitely be using these again. Um, I looked at the ingredients list for all of these and although there's nothing unusual in them, like it's all usual ingredients for like regular makeup products, they do contain parabens. So if you are against using those sort of chemicals on your skin, then I would stay away from these. But it's got all the usual ingredients that any makeup product would have. Also, I was looking at the manufacture dates and expiry dates on the packaging that these were sent in. And I got fresh products, guys. These One of these was manufactured just a couple months ago. And for a product that came from China and was like shipped across the world, that's pretty damn good. So back to the ingredients of these products, there's nothing incredibly special or that stands out about the ingredients. Anything pertaining to any form of skincare is really far down the ingredients list. So they'll only contain small quantities of like shea butter or jojoba oil, which is in one of these products but it's very far down the ingredients list, so don't expect any kind of skincare from any of these products. Overall, I really enjoyed using them. I'm going to continue using them. And yeah, again, if you wanted to check out any of these products, I will leave the links in the description box down below. If you wanted to purchase anything, be sure to use the code to get 10% off. I do not earn any commission from you using this code. I just hope that maybe it means that this company will want to work with me again in the future. So that's it for this video guys. If you did enjoy it and found it informative and helpful, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, 
follow me on my Instagram, which is also Life as Geek Eye, on which I upload every single day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, I wanted to quickly get on here before I edited this video. Um, it's been a few days since I filmed that first bit of the video and I had a chance to use the, um, the Bonnie's Choice face powder again and I wanted to give you my second impression and a bit more of an insight into what this powder is really like. So today I used a foundation and a concealer that I know work for me and I set the concealer with that Bonnie's Choice powder. Now, um, I actually tried to use it for baking a little bit and I don't, I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer and I don't know if you can see in the viewfinder, excuse that, I was wearing my glasses just before, um, but I tried to use the powder for baking a little bit and if you can see, it looks really, really heavy, like I can feel I've got powder under my eye. So the first time I used the powder in the first part of the video, I just really used to set the concealer and it finished beautifully. It was really nice and smooth and it looked airbrushed and it was gorgeous. But today I tried to use it to bake a little bit and I don't know if you can see but it's already breaking apart on my nose. To be fair, I have been wearing this for about three hours but it already looked really thick when I first applied the powder and now it's breaking apart on my nose. It's a little bit thicker on this side because I did it on this side before I did this side and then I just um, applied a very light powder on this side. I didn't really bake. But this side, dang, I'm going to have to scrape that off with a paint scraper. <laughs> it, that, it feels that heavy. You can see all my lines and all my pores. And this is after I tried to blend it out a bit more and get all that powder off. But it was just starting to look worse and worse. So I just left it. And then I set my face with the setting spray and it sort of settled down a little bit. But now you can see it's sort of breaking apart. And you can see where my glasses are have been sitting there on my nose. So yeah, that's just a little bit more of an insight into that Bonnie's Choice powder. Personally, I wouldn't use it to bake because it just gets really heavy and cakey and it it's creasing up a little bit under my eyes. But other than that, it's great for setting concealer, just a really light powder to make everything look smooth and airbrushed. But yeah, I wouldn't use it for baking, so that's just a little bit more of an insight into the powder. Thanks guys. Subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Um, I'm not going to include the ending of it. Does that make sense? Anyway, next year. <laughs> Put that at the end of the video. <laughs> that was up my nose. You got a full view of my husband's nostrils. <laughs> Bye. Subscribe. Thank you for watching. Whew, that noise. What's up, you guys? It's your girl Judy here from my life is. Love.